ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அவங்கள பிரசன்ட் பண்ணணும்னு சொல்றாங்க ஹலோ அம்மே வாட் இஸ் गाइस ஹலோ ஹலோ க்ளோஸ் தி டோர் ஒரேன்சிஸ்டன்சி <laughs> 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 whitish in color foul odor not blood stained and not associated with itching what if it is blood stained what will you think of um some erosion or something is possible cervical or vaginal erosion what is the age of the patient 22 years how much 22 yes ma'am okay you think of cervical erosion yes then what else any other history see if it is blood stained any other history that you will ask for the patient will not come out with that history what other history is important for a patient who is in marital life how about post coital bleeding what is the significance am i audible doctor yes ma'am okay, okay. Uh, supposing this patient she said you said blood stained i think of cervical erosion Okay. Yes. Supposing the patient has a postcoital bleeding, what will you think of? Anybody else can also answer, doctor. And some polyps. Polyp will cause postcoital bleeding. Not postcoital. Mm. What are the commonest carcinomas in our country? Uh, cervical. So C A cervix is very much important, no? Yes. Any patient with? Uh, any patient uh, with reproductive cin3 or ca cervix in situ carcinoma can cause can have a blood stain discharge is it not yes okay supposing see this patient you said not associated with itching if she has itching what all will you think of uh candidiasis or uh, trichomonasis okay so if it is going to be candidiasis what else will be associated with candidiasis and um, the discharge will be like a uh, dirty white discharge okay okay any general condition that you look for in candidiasis ma'am. yes in candidiasis mm, which patients are prone for candidiasis immunodeficiency any, or what else uh, diabetes mellitus yes diabetes okay you should think of the common things first hiv and all that is not i mean it's common but not that common as diabetes is it not diabetes is a every other patient has a diabetes is it not so we should think of the organism and we should think of the general diseases that might cause itching okay sometimes even a 
pulval carcinoma or a vaginal carcinoma can also cause itching, is it not? Though right. they are very rare. Okay, so think of the common things first. First, you should think of diabetes, then think of the common infections, as you told rightly, candidiasis, trichomonas, and all that, right? Okay, okay doctor, go on. Uh, um, there's no history of vulval irritation, no history of pruritus, uh, there's no history of local drug applica application, and no history of allergies. Um, no history of dysuria, dyspareunia, and uh, no history of lower abdominal pain or lower back pain. If the patient has a lower abdominal pain, what is that uh, called? Pelvic inflammatory disease. Hmm? And all these are like uh, questions to be asked for PID, pelvic inflammatory PID. disease. So any patient with vaginal discharge with associated abdominal pain, you should think of pelvic inflammatory disease in the reproductive age group, right? Okay. How about low back pain? Why did you ask for low back pain? No, periton, like if it uh, spreads to the periton. Yes. If there's a pelvic abscess or a peritonitis, then she can have a low back pain, right? Okay. Yes, go on. Uh, menstrual history, menarche at 15 years, regular cycle, 3 slash 28 days, normal flow, 3 parts per day, uh, no history of clots, no history of pain, and last menstrual period was on 1st June. What are the types of dysmenorrhea? Uh, uh, menor uh, and pain during menstruation. It's called dysmenorrhea. What are the types? Yes? Not sure. Ma'am? Not sure. Why? Anybody else? Ma'am, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, there's primary and secondary. Primary okay. is spasmodic type and secondary is congestive type. Okay. So what type of dysmenorrhea do you get in PID? Uh, secondary, associated with pelvic pathology. Okay, so is it, is it spasmodic or uh, congestive? I think where all do you get spasmodic dysmenorrhea and where all do you get congestive dysmenorrhea? Yes, the name no, itself indicates no. Mm. Spasmodic are the ones which are not associated with any pelvic pathology. Without any pathology, you get spasmodic dysmenorrhea, is it? Yes. See, the name itself tells you, no, spasmodic dysmenorrhea, you get in conditions like space occupying lesions to stress, is it not? If you have a fibroid or if you have a polyp, then it causes spasmodic dysmenorrhea because the uterus contracts, it tries to push, push anything from inside, is it not? So if there's a submucous uh, fibroid or if there's a polyp and all that, then you get spasmodic dysmenorrhea. Whereas congestive, as the name itself tells, it is due to congestion or increased vascularity, is it not? So where all you get increased vascularity? Hmm? PID, is it not? PID, you have increased congestion. There is increased vascularity in the pelvis. That's why you get a congestive dysmenorrhea. Where else you will get congestive dysmenorrhea? Where else there is increased vascularity in the pelvis? Yes? Endometriosis, is it not? Endometriosis, there is increased vascularity to cause congestive dysmenorrhea, right? Then, even in a fibroid, there is increased vascularity premenstrual, right? There also you will get a congestive dysmenorrhea, right? So, you should, according to the history, you have to find out whether it is a congestive or a spasmodic dysmenorrhea. From that, we can find out what would be the probable pathological cause, right? Okay, the presenter can go on. Yes, uh, uh, marital history, married three months back. She's living with her husband. Uh, she gets no history of contraceptive use. Uh, past history, no history of blood. Uh, How is uh, contraceptive use related to the white discharge? Why history of contraception is important? Yes? So all history that you ask should have some relevance, is it not? Uh, yes. That is how the exams, uh, questions are asked in the exams. If she has an IUCD, what will happen? 
there is service itis, is it not? That can cause the vaginal discharge, right? Yes. If she has ossipals, if she has uh, ossipals, ossipals associated with more that, is, that is also associated with increased discharge, so she'll have a wide discharge. Okay, that's why that that is how it is related to your wide discharge, right? Yes. So go on. Uh, uh, no history of diabetes mellitus, no history of TB, hypertension, thyroid disorders, asthma, allergy, and she gives no history of previous abnormal discharge and no history of past surgeries. Why no history of previous abnormal discharge? I mean, this is not a chronic issue, man. she's having it recently. What is the incidence of PID if the patient has, uh, what is the incidence of recurrence? If she has a PID at the say at the age of twenty one, what is the chance of her having a chance of recurrent PID? Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't know. Hmm. So any any patient having an STD once can have it ten to fifteen times again. Okay. Once they have two incidents of. 10 to 15 times the risk or 10 to 15 times they will have 10 to 15 it. times they have a risk of having a, another episode of PID. Okay. Okay. Right? If they have twice, then probably the incidence is more, about 20%. Okay? So the incidence increases as the patient has increased because she is sexually active, no? Chances of transmission from the husband is always there. That's why we always treat both the partners. Why we should treat both the partners in PID and in white discharge? Uh, because it's, uh, it can be sexually transmitted. So yes, it even can be transmitted from the husband. That's why we tell that either don't have contact for the period of treatment or use condom. At least a barrier contraception has to be used till the treatment is over because we are going to give treatment for a period of how many days? Uh, seven the patient, days. Seven is enough. You oh. have to give for 14 days. Okay. Right. right? So treatment of PID or even the wide discharge is going to be for a period of two weeks, 14 days. Right? So both the partners have to be treated and it has to be, it is a prolonged treatment. So either you should ask them to avoid coitus during this period or use a barrier contraception, a condom can be used so that the infection is not going to spread from both the part partners, vice versa. Right? Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, no, no significant family history. Uh, personal history, mixed diet, normal bowel and bladder habits, no adverse sexual habits. Uh, General examination, the patient right. is conscious. From the history, from the history, what do you think is the probable cause of white discharge? Mm, bacterial vaginosis. Why do you say it's bacterial vaginosis? Because mm, it wasn't itching, so uh, candidias and trichomonas are not possible, but uh, mm. it's still like. Uh, mm. so, uh, so, any diagnosis, you should have points in favor of your diagnosis, right? Yes. Okay. What you say is correct. Okay, because there's no itching. Bacterial vaginosis. Okay. So tell me how what are the common cause of vaginitis and how will you differentiate between the three types of vaginitis? Uh, uh vaginitis is most commonly like due to uh vaginosis, um, trichomonas, uh, candida and gonococcal. Is it gonococcal? Mm -hmm. No, doctor. Gonococcus and chlamydia mainly it causes upper GI infection. Mainly it causes endometritis and uh, salpingophritis and all that. Okay. So okay. in vagina, we just have only three infections. Okay. So we have bacterial vaginosis, then candidiasis and trichomonas. These three are the important organism. These three are the only organism which will cause vaginitis. Okay. Whereas cervicitis, you have a number of diagnoses. It can be even a gonococcus or a chlamydia, or it can be any of these three also, or it can be mixed. Okay, mixed pathogens, even a E. coli or a streptococcus or anaerobic 
hypoplasma and all this can also cause cervicitis, right? Whereas vaginitis is mainly due to three important organisms, bacterial vaginosis, then candida albicans and trichomonas. Trichomonas, okay. So how am I going to differentiate between these three? Um, based on the discharge, you can dis like distinguish. Okay, uh, so that's why the history is very, very important. Okay, okay. What is the type of discharge in all the three? Uh, in vaginosis, it's mostly white. Does not much change. Uh, in candidiasis, it's curly, curly white. Whereas okay. uh, in trichomonas, it's a uh, frothy yellowish green. Almost greenish. Okay. Okay. Then. Um, then. So this is from the color, hmm. and the and amount of discharge. See any discharge, you should know the color, the amount, associated symptoms. Is it not? Yes. Uh, in trichomonas, it's copious. Yeah. In copious, yes. In trichomonas, it is copious because it's a flagellated organism and keeps moving. Okay, it will have a increased discharge. Okay, that's why it's copious. Okay. Then. Mm, and. Uh, um, Vulval irritation is seen in uh, candidiasis and trichomonas, not right. seen in vaginosis. So, pleurites vulva is common in candidiasis. Okay. That's why in diabetes, any patient complaining of itching of the vagina, you should think of, I mean, itching of the vulva, you should immediately think of vulva vaginal candidiasis, right? Pleurites of the vulva is more common with candidiasis, right? Then. Strawberry cervix and trichomonas. All that is examination from the history. Only in the history, no? Yes. I've not done a speculum examination. How you see a strawberry vagina? Mm. So you have told me about the discharge, the color of the discharge, the amount of the discharge, associated symptoms like itching. Then what else is associated? How about the adjacent organs, the urethra is there? Is it not? So what else will the patient complain of? Pain during dysmenorrhea. Yes, dysmenorrhea and all that is in PID, the upper genital system, not the lower genital. What is close to the vagina, doctor? Um, see. Urethra. When the patient have dysuria, urinary tract is very much associated with the vagina, no? Uh, yes. hmm. Did you do not tell there is no body maturation? There's no frequency of maturation because urethritis is always associated with candidiasis and and hmm. that's why you should ask about this urea, no? And dyspareunia is very important, no? Because the vagina is all inflamed, the patient will have pain during coitus. Is it not? Yes or no? Are you there, doctor? Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Oh, uh, once. Am I audible, doctor? Uh, hello. Am I audible? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, you're audible. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. But you're not telling me anything. Uh. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Uh, Won't the patient have dysuria? Uh, yes, ma'am. Dysuria, dyspareunia, and all that. Is it not important? Uh, yes. Yes, because she has a vaginal discharge. The urethra gets inflamed, is it not? That's why the patient will have a dysuria or dyspareunia. Right? Uh, it's not seen in vaginosis. Pardon? Uh, vaginosis is it seen. No? What is not seen? Ma'am, is it seen in vaginosis? Dysuria. Dysuria, why do you get dysuria, doctor? Um, urethra gets in inflamed. Yes, urethra gets inflamed. The secretion comes, no? So the urethral mucosa is. Yeah. You can increase the volume. Right. Blood. Okay. Doctor, am I audible? See, you have to stop and tell that I am not audible, doctor. No, no. Even I You're know. audible. Okay. Right, with we talk through the mask and it's very difficult, no? <coughs> okay. No. So right from your history, you think in terms of bacterial 
uh, vaginosis. Vaginosis. And we are not in favor of candidiasis because there is no diabetes. Then the secretions is not cardioid precipitate and there is no itching. Right? Yes. And you are not in favor of trichomonas because it is not greenish and there is no itching. There is no associated urethritis or dyspareunia. Right? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes? Hello. Okay. Those are the points in favor of your diagnosis. Right. Now you go to the general examination. Uh, the, the general examination, the patient is conscious, oriented, moderately built and nourished. So in any case, in gynec or even in obstetrics, by the end of the history, you should have a diagnosis in your mind. Okay? It can be anything. Supposing you have a case of AUB from the history, from the, the way she is bleeding, the way she is having symptoms, you should come to some sort of diagnosis at the end of the history taking, right? Mm, yes. Okay, right. Then go on to the examination. Uh, uh, there's no pallor, no ectress, no cyanosis, no clubbing, no pedo, no such significant generalized mm. um, uh, Do we do breast examination, thyroid examination, spine examination? Yes, it is compulsory for all gyna cases. Spine means, like, what do we see? Yes, everything is important because, see, supposing there's a PID or something like that, and you are going to go for a, supposing it is a PID with tense additions, okay, the patient wants surgery, right, then we give spinal anesthesia, is it not? Uh, so your spinal examination is important. So any patient, every examination is very important. She can have an associated breast nodule, we don't know. She might have an associated thyroid nodule. So you just see the patient from head to foot, though the complaints are going to be wide discharge, it is important that you examine the breast and thyroid routinely. Anything can be associated. See, the breast examination, we don't know. She might have a CA breast or a fibroadenoma breast or a fibroadenosis breast, which indicates hyperestrogenism, right? And then we go and see for any other uterine pathology which can cause hyperestrogenism, right? She can have an AUB, which she will not tell. See, what symptom is more for the patient, she will tell. Supposing she has wide discharge more, then she will tell. She might have dysmenorrhea or dyspareunia or something personal, which, which she will not tell you. Yes. Okay. Unless you take a proper history, you will not come out with all these diagnoses. You can have multiple disorders occurring in the same patient. Is it not? That's why routinely we have to do the breast and the thyroid examination and the spine for the anesthetic, anesthetic purpose, right? Okay. Oh. Uh, vitals, pulse 78 per minute, uh, respirate 18 per minute, BP 120 per 80 mm HG, uh, temperature AFI height 155 centimeters and weight 49 centimeters. What if the patient presents with uh, temperature? What will you think of? PID. So, PID, she can present with toxic manifestations okay so we'll have to look out for all that okay yes go on systemic examination uh the system normal escalab it sounds hurt no audit sounds uh, cvs s1 s2 hurt no murmurs cnf no focal neurological deficits uh, abdomen examination on inspection uh it's not distended abdomens move equally with respiration the flanks are free there's no sinus no dilated veins no scars and no hernia on palpation, uh, the abdomen is not warm, not tender, soft. There's no organomic uh, On percussion, there's no shifting dullness. What if there is a hepatomegaly for this patient? What is that syndrome which is associated with PID? Anybody else? Ma'am, Fitzhugh Carter syndrome. Yeah, Fitzhugh Carter syndrome. What is that? Um, additions in the liver, ma'am. Yeah. So there is additions between the upper border of the liver and the diaphragm. Okay, which can cause upper right quadrant pain along with fever and all that, right? That's why even for a PID case, this organomegaly is important, right? Okay. Go on, doctor. No shifting dullness felt. Uh, auscultation, vowel sounds are high. Ma'am, do we do this in a patient? Yes, of course. External examination you have to do. Only the internal is not allowed. 
Okay. Had to satisfy the examiner. Okay. Um, yes. Examination of external genitalia, the pubic heart thick and black, uh, uh, labia majora minor or normal, urethral meatus clitoris normal, uh, vulva no redness, no scratch marks, no excoriation. I'm going to summary. Yes. Uh, summary, Mrs. Safe, yes. 22 year old, Aliparas lady of socioeconomic class 4, comes with complaints of virus discharge per vagina for the past one year. Tell me the parity, doctor. Nalli Paris. Okay, okay, doctor. Mm. Okay, how many years? Mm, just three months. Just three months. Okay. Okay, doctor. Di di diagnosis: a case of vaginal discharge for evaluation. Okay. So, what I how I going to evaluate? Uh, I'm a, uh, investigations. Um, okay. I want. I, uh, uh, Vaginal swab, uh, we can do uh, this thing, the shifts, uh, sorry, uh, we can look for uh, flow cells in the vaginal swab and increase wait, number of... Wait, wait, uh, wait, doctor, you told me about strawberry vagina, is it not strawberry cervix and all that? Want to, want, you don't want to do a speculum examination and see for all this? Which uh, will yeah. give you the, clinch you the diagnosis? So any kind of case, first we will do a speculum examination, okay? to find out if there's a strawberry vagina or a cervicitis or whatever it is, which can be the cause of the vagina discharge. Only then we're going to go and investigate, right? Okay. okay. So I'll do a speculum examination and see for strawberry vagina or cervicitis or if there's any discharge through the cervix, there can be an erosion cervix or there can be a polyp. Okay, all this can be diagnosed just by a simple speculum examination, right? Yes. Okay. After that, we can do Supposing you are in the OPD, okay, the patient wants to know the diagnosis immediately. What are you going to do? You have only three organisms. What are the physiological causes of discharge? Your patient, she doesn't have itching, she doesn't have uh, dyspareunia, she doesn't have dysulia, no symptoms, no? Only uh, discharge. Uh, um, in this patient, uh, during uh, ovulation, the discharge will be increased. Okay, right. So how are we going to counsel her that it can be physiological also? During ovulation, okay, then. What are other causes of physiological wide discharge? Patient or general? Yes. Um, are you asking in this patient or in general you're asking? In general. Uh, see, you have during... to count counsel her, no? See, because from the symptoms and the signs, what you have elicited, there's nothing significant for your pathological diagnosis, is it not? Mm, yes. Sir. So you want to, and she's married only for a period of three months, and she's an aliparous woman. First you want to tell her that it might be physiological. So what all will you tell when all she can have a physiological increased by discharge? In this patient, Pre, uh, pre menstrual, it will be uh, for some people. Yes, it might so be that's right. right. So, in pre menstrual period, ovulation time, all that it can be a increased wide discharge. Okay, then for young girls, sometimes the mothers are very anxious at the age of 10 and all, they'll bring the patient to you and say she has wide discharge. Okay, so even pre menarchal, before she's going to get the menstruation, she can have an increased wide discharge, is it not? And then, if this patient is on ocipals. We don't know. She might postpone the pregnancy also. So that's why history of drug intake is important. Right? If she has ocipal intake, then also the discharge can be increased. Okay? Otherwise, other causes will be during lactation. Is it not during lactation also? That is increased by discharge. Okay? So any yes. patient, if she has a discharge where she is going to use a diaper, then she will get scared and she will come to you. Right? Mm. So you should be very careful and 
First, you should think of physiological causes, which will cause increased discharge, then from the history and the clinical examination and your diagnostic procedures, then you can find out the pathological causes. Right? Okay. Now you are in the OPD. You want to find out you have done the speculum examination. There is no strawberry vagina, there is no cervicitis, there is no cervical polyp. Now you want to what you want to do? Yes, increase secretions. How will you differentiate between trichomonas, candidiasis, and bacterial vaginosis? In the OPD. Yes, in the OPD. Based on the discharge. Yeah. yeah, all that is over. See, from the history itself, we have come to a diagnosis, your probable diagnosis, you told bacterial vaginosis. But how are you going to confirm the diagnosis? Anybody else? What doctor? You know the answer? You know the answer? Um, hmm. What is wet mounting? Uh, um, it, 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 yes, what is wet mounting? Um, it's, uh, in a wet slide, you see, we will look for the organism. So, a simple microscope is available in the OP, no? So, you can yeah. just take the smear and put it under the, put a drop of water and do the wet mounting and look out for flagella. Is it not? If there is a flagellated organism there, then it is trichomonas. Oh, trichomonas. So, trichomonas can be just diagnosed by doing a wet mounting of the smear. Can we do it in the OPD? Mm, yes. Yes. Okay. Then next. Next, what are you going to do? Now, we have done the wet mounting. There is no flagella. So, trichomonas is ruled out. Okay. Now, what do you want to do? Now, I want to take proper grams, gram staining and you know. all Gram straining and all the pathologist only will do that. We can't do. No? Hmm? Can we have KOH? If you are, if you have given KOH, what you will do? Uh, Whips test. Hmm, Whips test. What is that? Uh, when the when the discharge is mixed with ten, one drop of ten percent KOH, there is one fishy smell which comes. Okay. So fishy smell will tell you it is uh, vaginosis. Bacterial vaginosis. This is not. What is Amstel's criteria? Uh, Amsel's criteria is to diagnose with bacterial vaginosis. Okay. Uh, if there is white dis uh, white milky discharge with, uh, on the uh, vaginal wall, uh, one point. Uh, if the pH of the discharge is more like alkaline, more than four point five. Okay. Uh, if, if if test is positive, and uh, and if uh, there's clue cells in the yes. So if there is clue cells in addition, then you know it is bacterial vaginosis. Is it not the same KOH? What else it will do? Uh, in Candida, you can use it. Yes. Uh, the same KOH, if you put, you can differentiate between Candida and, and other two. Bacterial vaginosis. Is it not? If you say a hyphae, then it is uh, Candidiasis. If you have Lipstress posture, it is Bacterial vaginosis. So, in the OPD itself, you don't have to go for hyphae, gram strain, Sabrot, Sagar, Nickerson's medium, and all that. That the pathologist will do. Okay? So, you have. Clinically, you are going to diagnose what is the cause and treat the patient then and then, right? So, yes. wet mounting, trichomonas. With the KOH, differentiate between candidiasis and bacterial vaginosis. Anyway, the treatment as such is going to be a syndromic management, is it not? Now, we have combined kits. What, is, what will be the management? For the special method. Yeah, suppose, supposing it is bacterial vaginosis, what is the management? Uh, uh, metronidazole uh, for, uh, for a milligram BD. Okay. Which you are going to give for? Uh, 14 days. Okay, 14 days. She will have vomiting. So, always the common side effects has to be explained to the patient and anti emetics also have to be given. Have you ever taken metronidazole? Have you ever taken metronidazole, doctor? It will cause vomiting. Okay? It will okay. cause your tongue and all that will be swollen, sort of thing. You won't have any taste. Okay? All these are the side effects. You should know the side effects of all the drugs that you are using. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, so they give for seven days. Um, if the patient is able to tolerate, we have to give it for 14 days actually. Okay. But it's most of the patients will be, even you and I will be non compliant with metrandazole. Okay. That's why we have the other drugs now, the other variants which has less complications the tinidazole, the secnidazole, all these other later drugs which has less of the side effects. Right? Okay. Yes. But what is available now? Hospital is metrandazole, so we are going to give only metrandazole, right? Okay. Then, supposing it's candidiasis. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, uh, this thing, um, antifungal creams. Uh, you can give local antifungal creams and orally. Uh, fluconazole, you can give a single dose. So a single dose that fluconazole, one fifty, depending on the weight of the patient. You have 150 milligram or 200 milligram, depending on the weight you have to give, right? Single strat. Sometimes, if she has recurrent infections, we give it weekly also for three to four weeks, right? Okay. <coughs> if it is uh, trichomonas, uh, secnidazole. Same, metendazole is given, uh, is it not? Yes. And then you can go for secnidazole or other drugs also, pinidazole and all that, right? Okay. So that's why they have a syndromic management where we have a kit having secondazole. Now we have the when you go to the STD department, they have a kit, okay? Which have what is the kit? What is the composition of the kit? Uh, Secretazole will have. Secretazole, okay. We have two tablets of tinidazole or one tablet of secretazole. Then we have azithromycin, okay? One gram which is taken in the empty stomach, and we have fluconazole, 150 milligram, okay? This is given for both the partners so that it will take care of all the organisms. Acitromycin will take care of all the <coughs> gonococcus and chlamydia, right? Your secnidazole or your tinidazole will take care of your bacterial vaginosis and the trichomonas, right? And yes. fluconidazole will take care of the candidiasis. candidiasis. Okay? So we have a kit which can be easily given for both the partners. They'll take this kit and after that they are given supplemented with capsule doxycycline 100 milligram DD for 14 days along with metrandazole, right? For 14 days. This treatment goes on for both the partners for 14 days and they have to have sexual abstinence and otherwise they have to use a condom, right? This is the treatment, right? Yes. Okay, coming, coming to PID. What do you know about PID? Paralytic inflammatory disease. Yes. So it is infection of the upper genital system involving the, the uterus, the tubes, and the ovaries. Right? So you yes. can have acute or chronic PID. Right? How will the acute PID present and how will the chronic PID present? What are the symptoms for which these patients will present to the OPD? Uh, um, if it's acute, like uh, they'll have pain. pain. So they'll come with pain, abdomen, fever. Okay, then dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea, is it not? And even sometimes excessive menstrual disturbances. Okay, what are the differential diagnoses? For PID. Yes. Um, ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy, yes, especially she's an aliparous woman. So if she has a period of amenorrhea followed by abdominal pain, then you should think of ectopic pregnancy. Yes. Then supposing she has a right sided pain. Surgery <coughs> no, posting is over. Appendicitis. No. Okay, appendicitis. So 
you have to differentiate PID from appendicitis and ectopy. These two are the most important differential diagnosis. Others are also there. It can be just a UTI or a or a bladder stones, the urethric stones and all that can also present with acute abdominal pain. Okay. Right? You have to differentiate between uh, these three. I've got some slides, probably we can see that. Okay. The chronic PID, how do they present? Yes. Chronic. Hmm. Again, they'll present with pelvic pain. They can present with infertility. Is it not? Uh, they'll have all additions and all that. And then, uh, yes, tuberculosis is one of the most important cause of chronic PID. Is it not? So once again, they'll present with abdominal pain. Then, menstrual disturbances, dyspareunia dysmenorrhea, infertility, all that, right? Yes. So you should elicit history of tuberculosis in these patients, especially infertility. You have to look out for tuberculous salphimophritis. That will be the important cause of infertility. Infertility. All right. Treatment for PID. Do we do it as OP treatment or as inpatient treatment? I'm inpatient. Inpatient, is it? The mild cases, you can do the same treatment. Okay. Medication. Yes, doxycycline and metendrozole for a period of 14 days. Whereas, if the patient is toxic, with high fever, she has a pelvic abscess, or she has a PID with pregnancy, or if she has tuberculosis, then we'll have to, if she is a HIV patient and all that, then we'll have to treat her as an inpatient because we want to evaluate and treat the associated condition also okay so those cases we have to admit and treat where we'll give parenteral antibiotics what antibiotics you want to give uh, for PID uh, this, if it is tuberculosis we are going to start around AD, ADT okay right I'm cephalus for if it is PID Yes, we have the third generation cephalosporins that has to be given along with metronidazole parenterally for a period of one week and then we switch over to oral, doxycycline and metronidazole that has to be given for 14 days. Okay? Yes. That is how you treat the PID. Right? Okay. Any doubts you can ask, we can then, then go to the slides. Uh, uh, Any? For this yeah. thing, um, uh, for Candida, you said 150 slash 200, depending on the weight. Yes. Uh, weight, like what weight? Is it? That's what, it depends on the patient's weight, doctor. That if the patient is less than 50 kg, you give 150. Mm -hmm. Supposing she's 70 kg, then we'll have to do 200. Uh, 150 is not enough, no? Mm -hmm. Right? I think so. Okay. Then anything else? Any doubts? Shall we share, share the slide? Yes. Yes. You have to allow me to share slide, no? Read the slides, then we'll finish. Is it audible, Doctor? Is it visible? Nice. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now your rep will read, okay? Leukorrhea, increased vaginal discharge, physiologic, pathologic. Normal vaginal discharge, creamy white discharge, vulvar secretions, bar. Oh. 
pulvar secretion bartholin glands sweat glands sebaceous glands skin glands vagina cervix endometrial glands fallopian tubes in normal vaginal discharge increased when ovulation endocervical glands glands premenstrual phase uh, pregnancy sexual excitement bartholin's gland ph is less than 4.5 physiological vaginal discharge newborn puberty congestion of pelvic organs cervical ectopian contraceptives vaginal douche pathological vaginal discharge vaginitis in infancy and childhood senile vaginitis candidiasis bacterial vaginosis trichomonas vaginitis mucoporulent cervicitis foreign bodies neoplasm urinary and fecal discharge Vaginitis in infancy and childhood, low immunity, age 1 to 5 years, infection, foreign body, tumor, wet smear, gram stain, culture, speculum, treatment, rest, antibiotics, estrogen, atrophic vaginitis, postmenopause, decreased estrogen, vaginal wall thinning, decreased acidic environment, yellow green bloody, pruritic painful, dysuria, dyspareunuria. Postpital bleeding, vaginal wall thinning, colpitis macularis, patchy ulceration, adhesive vaginitis, atrophic vaginitis, wrap smear, gram, gram strain, culture, plus positive or ma- negative cervical biopsy, production of cure attach, treatments, antibiotic, estrogen. Are you busy? Okay, a person infection service it is
just share this two slides with my batch ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank Sharad, did you take attendance? Very good. I'll just note down the attendance. I don't think Sarah took it. Yeah, done, done. You can leave. 